Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is sick. Sick. Now, you say, okay, well, after everything we talked about in uh, Jeremiah, now we're coming to the book of Lamentations and we're starting off sick. Well, there's the, the CSB version of the verse I'm going to read today, Lamentations 1, verse 22. Um, it says, I am sick at heart. And they say, well, why? Why would he be upset? I mean, now with the name Lamentations, right? Jeremiah, uh, still given authorship of this, looking, you can imagine him, uh, and you've probably seen paintings of, of him, like looking over the destructed Jerusalem. Um, right. The, to have that image and the image that he paints for us here. And it's really how to deal with the grief of losing the temple for them, losing their their city, losing all that was precious to them. Now, remember, Jeremiah had the, the right attitude towards these things, but the people did not. Now, not to say Jeremiah was alone in that, but the true believers, the true repentant ones were few and far between. Now, the verse that we're going to read, uh, it's also from the position of, of Jerusalem. It's He's he's writing this beautiful, beautiful words throughout Lamentations, uh, a lot of beautiful uh, poetry throughout, even a, an acrostic with the Hebrew alphabet, uh, kind of similar to Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, similar to Psalm 119 with the Hebrew alphabet of the 22 letters um, on the first four chapters, not in chapter five. But then the way it's also structured, chapter three is really the central part. And and I, some of my favorite words in scripture are in Lamentations chapter three. So with all of that, from the perspective of Jerusalem itself, as if it was speaking, here's what God's word says. Let all their wickedness come before you and do to them as you have done to me for all my transgressions, for my sighs are many and my heart is faint. Now, what it's saying is, you know, Jerusalem would be crying out, essentially saying, look, all these nations now that are rejoicing because we have been destroyed and and burnt down and, and looted and all the things that we had talked about there in Jeremiah because of that and these nations are laughing about it lord we're praying that you would do the same to them it's even you see throughout that it's, it's even a call to looking ahead to the day uh the day of the lord that's coming i mean even today that we would look and and those who would um, seek to destroy churches and christians and and even martyr christians as well that we would look ahead and say god would you repay it you know, bring on the day of the Lord, bring on the end time so that everyone will see, God, that you are real. But in the meantime, what happens is Jeremiah and Jerusalem and I mean, even the city as a whole, as the people were grieving, They're grieving over what was lost. And you say now, Jerusalem says she knew that she was punished, right, because of her transgressions. Well, see, one of the, one commentator put it this way. It wasn't so much, and I'm paraphrasing even then, it wasn't so much that uh, Jerusalem and the people there, I'll just use that as the whole for those people. It wasn't that Jerusalem said that they didn't believe in God. It was that God had become irrelevant in their lives. In other words, they got caught up in the, the ritual of worship and it didn't really mean anything anymore. Now you think about that. They got caught up in the rituals to where God became irrelevant, wasn't important. It, it was just one of the things that they did and it really had no meaning to it. That's why they could invite in all these other uh, pagan religions and, and it just began to rule their lives because God was no longer relevant. Now there's a lot in our society that say, hey, we gotta make God relevant again. No, God is always relevant. What we need to do is get rid of all the other stuff that is irrelevant. And when we look at this world today and we look, if could you imagine 
if our nation, or even let's just go to the town in which you live, wherever you may be listening from today, what if your town was destroyed? Would the Christians be crying out, saying, God, we understand that we deserve this because, and our land deserved this, and our city deserved this because we are so sinful? Or would we be an, among the number that say, God, why did you do this? See that then you can begin to kind of get a, a glimpse into Jeremiah's heart as he was looking and saying, God, we know why. And as terrible as it is, and not that we would wish it on our worst enemy, really. We'd say, God, what do we do with this? He says, I'm, I'm sick at heart. And I think we would do well to be sick more often. And what I mean by that is there's too many things in our culture today that don't make us sick anymore. We have become numb. We have began to just kind of accept. And it goes back to Sunday sermon, right? We talk about the compromise that we make. And we have to be very careful in that. And I know I, I, I'm right there with you when I when I see things on TV or hear it on the news or whatever that I'm quick to just, I just want to turn it off. I don't want to hear it anymore. But what it should do, right? That's one thing. If you if we if we don't want to hear about it and we don't want to to thrive on that, or not thrive on it, but not we don't want to focus on that. But what it should do us should do to us is make us so sick that we hit our knees and we begin to pray for the lost. Pray that we would be vessels and channels of blessing and, and, and that we would be the messengers that God has called us to do, called us to be. Today, I think the challenge for us is to be sick, sick enough to pray. Think about that. Let the Lord speak to you through his word today. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.